cleaning the mic. <laughs> we don't want any germs. <laughs> anyway, well, praise the Lord. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I wish everybody else was able to come because we miss everybody. We miss seeing our King of Kings family very, very, very much. And we are praying for everybody, and we're grateful that everyone is doing well. Thank God. Um, the Lord dropped this word in my, my spirit, and uh, it's, a, it's a very encouraging word, but it's a very so, uh, so, sober word. Sober word, is that the right way to say it? sobering word. And um, so please listen to what I have to say today because I feel it's really important that, that we all do what we're going to do today. And um, um, so here we go. So we know that <clears throat> we are in a, a season here, obviously, that none of us have ever been in before, right? And we know that this is a Passover tomorrow night uh, at sundown starts uh, Passover from April 8th to April 16th. And, you know, this, this situation with this virus that's happening, you know, nothing is a coincidence with God. And the fact that it's happening around Passover to me is very, very important, and we need to take notice of that because we know what happened at Passover. We know that at Passover... Um, you know, the Lord visited Moses because of the cries of the people. If you read through Exodus chapter 3, uh, Moses was out in the desert or he was tending his sheep and, you know, he saw the burning bush. And, and so he had this encounter with the Lord and the Lord spoke to him and said, you know, I heard the cries of my people. He said, I've heard their sorrows, I've seen their sorrows, I've seen their distress, and I'm here to answer. And so he called you know, Moses to be a mouthpiece, similar to how we are, the born-agains, that are the fired-up, battle-ready, armed, you know, tongue-breathing, uh, fire-breathing Christians, that we are the ones that the Lord is calling to, to bring um, deliverance to, um, you know, to our nation from this plague because we have the authority of Christ Jesus within us. But God had called Moses to take this step, and Moses was flipped out because he didn't know what to do, but God heard their cry. Just as we have been praying, church at large, people from all over the world have been praying for God to open up the heavens, to rend open the heavens. But see, when visitation comes, a lot of times it's not the way we think. Right? Because a lot of times when you think about visitation, you know, you think about just the open heavens and the glory of God. That's one way, and it's going to happen. But he has to get our attention, yeah. especially here in America. We have a good. And, and it's so easy to be passive and complacent. <clears throat> so we want to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying tonight. And, you know, I just want to pause here for a moment because during worship, I, I saw lungs that the Lord, I know a lot of people are battling with lung issues, so, but I saw lungs um, being healed. So I just want to speak right now to those that are battling with the respiratory issues, that, that those that are battling with this virus right now. We speak to your lungs and we say, be healed in Jesus' name. We, we decree and declare a creative miracle over these lungs right now. We say you will live and not die. We speak to that spirit of death that's been released over the body. We say no more. Back up. We speak to that spirit of fear that's been working with the spirit of death that's been trying to take everybody out. We say no to you in Jesus' name. And we lose this resurrection life, the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your presence. Oof. We thank you for your healing power that you are Jehovah Rapha that we can call upon your name because your word says that you will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. You don't abandon us in these situations. That You're here with us, oh God. Hallelujah. Just getting back to what I was saying, this Passover season, what happens is, is that during this time, it really started after Purim, uh, the Hebrews, what they would do is, is start cleaning their house. And in Hebrew, I'm sorry, in Exodus chapter 12, 15, it says, in the celebration of the Passover in future years, seven days you shall not eat unleavened bread, but on the first day you shall remove the leaven from your houses because it represents the spread of sin. For whoever eats leavened bread on the first day through the seventh day, that person will be cut off and excluded from the atonement made for Israel. So this is the season we're in. And, and so it's, uh, you know, 
that's where we get the word spring cleaning from. And so during this divine pause that we're in, God is, is looking to get our attention. Amen. Now, you know, the, the, what's been released here, I don't believe God sent the virus, but there's, there is judgment, and it's judgment for mercy, that God wants to extend his mercy, just like there was a judgment over the plague that took place in Israel, and when the, the people in Egypt, there was plagues that were released. It was for the people's deliverance. And so what we have to understand right now is God wants us to do a house cleaning. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Because there's a lot that, that the church at large and, and, you know, even introspectively, you know, I have been just seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, I know we all have blind spots. And I, I want my house clean, my spiritual house clean. I want you to reveal to me any areas or issues that, that would turn your face from me, that, that would harden my heart, that would prevent me from coming into your presence in a deeper way. Your word says, the word of God says that no flesh will glory in his presence. So this is this, this time we have to discern what is the spirit of the Lord saying. The other day the Lord said to me, Tricia, what's your new normal going to look like? And I'm asking you, what is your new normal going to look like? I know I'm not going back to the old. I know I'm not staying in this situation with all this isolation stuff. That's not of God. I mean, we have to do what we have to do to, you know, for this thing to go. But it's going to go in Jesus' name because of the power of the blood and the saints. And we're going to see a shift. That I promise you. But the Lord wants us to, he's speaking to us during this time. He's saying, listen, you have to... Um, Allow my spirit, the wind of Holy Spirit, to blow upon us to remove any corrupting thing that can be hindering us from entering in, from coming to the altar and getting into that pleat, that deep place with the whole, you know, with God. And so, um, you know, we know that uh, in Nisan, this this season of Passover, this time is uh, a very holy time because this thing is all about deliverance. This was what brought Egypt out of slavery and bondage. How many of you are in bondage? How many are you suffering in slavery or have a, a bondage to alcoholism or have a bondage to drugs or just have a bondage in your heart? We have a hard heart and your heart is not open to the things of God. How many of us have family members that are not serving the Lord? It seems hopeless, but see, God is a God of hope. And during this time, one of the things that this season represents is a miracle season. So we call those things which be not as though they are. I'm not going to look at this thing and think, think gloom and doom. I'm saying, God, I know you have a plan. Because as you know and I know, God is not surprised by this. And God has a plan for us. And he said, listen, hang tight. Chuck said, tighten your belt. And I was looking up a scripture this morning. I had no intentions of going all here, but I'm going to. In, in Psalm 2, you know where the scripture, it says, kiss the sun. And so uh, I, I was just, you know, I love looking. I was just praying through the Psalms, and I love looking up words. And, and I was pretty familiar with what the definition of kiss was, but I, this time I related it, and I don't have my notes for what I looked up, but it's all right. Um, in Psalm 2... It's the word uh, N-A-S-H-A-Q, and the word kiss, darn it, I didn't bring my other Bible, it's where I had it written. It means um, uh, to be equipped for war. You know, that's, you know, when it says, it's the same word in the Song of Solomon where it says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for his love is better than wine. And that word kiss there means to weaponry of war, but it also meant um, to fasten yourself. So that got my attention because when I looked up that word and I thought fasten, well, Chuck said a couple of months ago that we need to, during this season, tighten our belt. Right. And we know that when we have to tighten our belt, it's, it's something that we have to be aware of. You know, it could be a financial distress or, you know, however, the Lord's saying straighten up, listen up. And so when you look that word up, you know, where, what it meant was to be battle ready, Tighten your belt. So this all came out of that word kiss. 
So the Lord is saying to us during this time, as Chuck has released that word about tightening our belt, he's saying, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, for my love is better than wine. Because in that place of intimacy, I'm allowing you to become battle ready. I'm allowing you to know how to fasten yourself to me, tightening yourself up where you're, you're, you're um, you know, relieving yourself or, or uh, of any kind of self-sufficiency, but you're fastening yourself to me so that I can bring you into greater revelation and greater wisdom and how to move forward. And so he's saying, kiss the sun, because he's saying, why are the nations raging? The Lord's, the word of God saying, the Lord's laughing at what's happening. He's got a plan, but he's saying, listen, I'm calling my people to fasten themselves to me and I will give you in that deep, intimate place, battle ready strategies and wisdom to overcome so that we can move forward in ways that we have never moved forward before. See, that's what the spirit of the Lord is saying during this miracle season. So in that place, when we are battle ready, we have the opportunity because of the authority and the power of the blood of Jesus within us to change the atmosphere. We're the thermostats. That's who God has called us to be. Not fear, not what the media is saying. That's a fear frenzy that's been released. And I reject that. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. That's why we have to watch what we're listening to. I'm not denying what's happening, but I know in whom I believe. I know that he's the great I am. I know that with God, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible. I know there's been casualties. I recognize that. But I still, I'm going to keep my eyes like Flint, focus on him, because he's the only answer. There's no equal to our God. We don't hear people crying out to other gods right now, do we? They're calling out to Jesus. They're praying out in the streets. You think God's been trying to get our attention? One way to get us to pray. So I'm not saying God sent the plague, but I'm saying that there's, there's, there is judgment. There has been sin in the land. Now, again, it's judgment for our freedom. Hear what I'm saying? And there's sin in the land. There's, there's gay marriages. Listen, God loves the gay people. He knew this was happening, but it's, it's not right. It's between a man and a woman. There is, you know, uh, all this crazy stuff. Look at the abortions that's taking place. That's not okay. The, we can't even, we can't have church, but you can have an abortion. See, there, there's issues here that's wrong. There's such rebellion and dis- disrespect that from all of us here, we have to look at our hearts and say, where have I engaged? Where have I aligned myself with my attitude? Every single one of us. Now, listen, God's not asking for us. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for maturity. And what the fear of the Lord, there's a holy fear of the Lord that's going to be released over the body of Christ. And what that fear of the Lord is surrender and submission to the Lord, a holiness, back back to the holiness of the Lord, not have it our way. It's have it your way, Lord. It's not, you know, I, I was listening to something, and they, I think it was, um, what is his name? David Wilkerson called seeker-friendly churches sin-friendly churches. And, you know, <clears throat> and again, I'm not knocking people. I just know what the Lord told me to speak about. Amen. And you could be in our church, and I can, I can be the one that had an ugly heart. And the Lord has shown me my heart times when it's been ugly. And so, but the thing is, the Bible says a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit. And so what we have to recognize is God is calling us back to living a holy lifestyle. He's calling us back to be in total submission and surrender to him. Why? Because he wants us to operate in the power and the authority that he's called us as his people to operate in. During this season, you know, we are in the Hebraic era of pay, which is which represents the mouth. So we know that life and death are in the power of our tongue. And one of the things that um, this, this season, what it represents, you know, we've shared on this before, but I, 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 didn't, I, I thought this was good, and I decided to still share this. Pay is the picture of our mouth, of the mouth. So our words and decrees, as you know, will carry an extra weight in this season. Now, the other interesting thing about pay is it has a hidden letter in it. And inside the letter pay 
is letter bet, B-E-T, which means house of creation. This means that we speak with our, what we speak with our mouth becomes created. That's how powerful this is. So we, so rise up in our vision and authority. Do you understand that, that it, it even says it in Hebrews that, that when they spoke in faith, what they spoke, they literally created. We're creating in the spirit realm. So what are you creating? I have it. Thanks. So, um, so some of the words, some of the pay words, which I thought was so interesting considering what's happening is, um, the words are expectation, visit, visitation. Um, pay is also the 17th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which means overcoming victory. So even though we're in this time and it seems to be so out of control, it's not. I'm here to declare to you that we are still a people that are walking in overwhelming victory, period. And so it says here, so we have to expect that. What are your expectations? So listen to this. Um, so some more pay words, which I thought was so interesting. Earthquake. We know there have been earthquakes, right? Rebellion. Lord knows we've had that. Stumbling. Uh, it says uh, to stumble, to dash into pieces, to break, to crush, to be in perplexity, to startle by sudden alarm, fear, ruin, destruction, pharaoh. That's what this word, this, that's what this era, that's what this represents. But listen to what also it represents. And see, this is where I'm going. This is what we're, we're going to shift and we're going to pray today. Increase. The word pay also means increase. Refined as pure gold. See, there's a refining process that's taking place. Yes. Now, we can choose to say no to it. Yes. Yes. Or we can say, God, I'm running into the fire. And I want you to burn out all the dross. And I want you to burn out all the mess that's in, he, in me that I'm not aware of, that I'm blinded to. That's preventing me from operating in what you've called me to do, what you've destined me to. So listen to this. It says, to be refined as pure gold, deliverance, to blow, to puff, to kindle as in fire, miracle and wondrous things. I thought, whoa, Lord. You know, because we taught on this when, in, you know, ahead of the year, but who knew that this was going to happen, right? So when I was reviewing this, I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord. See, God had it. He knows. He knows the times and seasons. He's not surprised by anything. That's why he wants us to, to trust him and to run into his arms and know that, yeah, you may be afraid. You know, people, you know, are, are you know, concerned. I mean, it's, it's a stinky situation out there. I get it. But you know what? I said, Lord, every day I surrender to you. I submit to you, Lord. I know that my steps are ordered by you, and I know you have a perfect plan here. I pray, praying Psalm 91. Talk about a time and an opportunity for us to get in the presence of the Lord, for us to worship him, for us to meditate on his word. Oh, my Lord, it's just been a glorious time. Not, I, mean, I said, Lord, I mean, it's not that I didn't do it, but I didn't do it like I've been doing now. And I said, Lord, show me my heart. So I want to read you some scripture. So I said, Lord, this is a time right now. And I felt like what the Lord said of soul cleansing and repentance. Because you know why? He's, he wants us to be fully aligned with him. Because he, the prayers that we've been crying out to God for, he wants to answer. And he's saying, hear my heart. Get, submit yourself to me. Surrender yourself to me. Listen to this. Psalm 51.10 in the Passion. It says, create a new clean heart within me. Make that your prayer. Fill me with pure thoughts and a holy desire ready to please you. Amen. Ready to please you. Not fight you. Please you. Not, oh, God, what are you doing? Please him. Lord, create that in me. I'm asking you, Lord. I'm asking him. Create in me a pure heart. Lord, anything that's just not pleasing to you, please create that pure heart within me. Psalm 139, 23 through 24, in the Passion says, God, I invite your searching gaze into my, my heart. I invite, I love that, your searching gaze into my heart. Don't be afraid. Lord, look into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that might be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxieties, all the emotional issues. Lord, sift through that. Help me. Help me to identify root issues. See if there's any path of pain I'm walking in on. And lead me back to your glorious, everlasting ways that bring that path that brings me back to you. See, that's what he wants. He wants us to come back to him. 
He's saying, listen, I hear your cry. You're, you're just so limiting. <laughs> you're limiting me. I'm the great I am. I have great things in store for you, but you are limiting me. I'm limiting him because at times we don't understand and we try, you know, God's a spirit, as you know, and we try to intellectualize. You can't understand him with your head. It's spirit to spirit, right? So listen to Luke uh, 645. People are known in the same way. Out of the virtue stored in their hearts, good and upright people will produce good fruit. But out of the evil hidden in their hearts, evil ones will produce what's evil. For the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard of in your words. Now, we've been hearing a lot of words lately. And, and they, they ain't been good. And so my challenge tonight is, what are we all saying? What's, what's, that, what's coming out of the abundance of our heart? So I have here, you know, we have to cleanse our heart through repentance, obviously. Uh, negative talk. Are, are you speaking death over yourself, or are you speaking life? What are you speaking? You're going, oof, I'm getting all these sound effects here. Pessimism, anything that contradicts the word of God, hidden sin, things that you may have been a little loosey-goosey with. Oh, it's okay that I watch this little sex scene on TV. Oh, it's all right. No, it's not okay. Because, it's, it's, you know, your eye gate is holy, and you don't want to see things you shouldn't be seeing. And again, this isn't a condemning message, but it's a message that we have to hear. We have got to have our heart that we, we put it on the altar of, to the Lord and say, Lord, cleanse me. Just like it says here, search me thoroughly. Lord, I invite you to gaze in my heart because I don't want anything holding us back. I don't want any lie, anything in between us. So we have to release bitterness, unforgiveness. Listen, the bitterness and the unforgiveness, judging having a self-righteous attitude, talking about people, that's got to stop. And, and I'm going to go there in a minute. Well, let me finish. Um, I'll go there in a minute. <laughs> renew, we have to renew our minds, right? Passivity and complacency. The Lord, I've been speaking about, a, the Lord gave me a word, what, last year, two years ago. I spoke it at Glory Zion about having a slothful spirit. <clears throat> and at that point, I thought, you know, Lord, I knew he was speaking to us about, you know, getting out of complacency and passivity. And that is so scary because the, 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 the uh, ten virgins, you had five wise and the five foolish, they were asleep. And, and that word, when you look up, um, and I'll go there in a minute, but, but they were slothful. They were passive. They weren't awake to the spirit of God. And we have got to be battle ready and alert watchmen. Boy, I'm telling you more than ever, we have got to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. We cannot move forward in a passive mindset. You know what it says in Revelations, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll, I'll spit you out of my mouth. So there's been abortion. Oh, my. And, and you know, our state, you know, New York, New Jersey, you know, they, they, they turned everything around and rejoiced when they put, plan, you know, gave money, $9.5 million, ouch, to um, Planned Parenthood. You know, and, and they were rejoicing over that. And to where we can have a third term abortion? Why are you shaking your head at me? Oh, so anyway, so, you know, we, this has got to stop. I mean, this is murder. I'm talking about that. There's sexual sin, there's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. You can just have TV on and they have people having sex. That's crazy stuff. It is not okay. It is not okay for little kids to be watching this stuff. There's, there's sex trafficking going on. There's, he said enough is enough. Amen. And God is getting our attention. When have you seen people praying in the streets all over the world, praying to God and crying out? God is getting our attention. And, and again, I'm not gloom and doom. I'm speaking truth. We cannot go on like this any longer. And the church has the answer. We can't be acting like the world. Amen. So in Numbers chapter 16, this is about the rebellion of Korah. And, and you know, I, I've been meditating on this for quite some time. And in Numbers 16, they had an issue with their leaders. And I'm going to get a little political here in, because the Lord told me to. And in Numbers chapter 16, 
um, it talks about how Korah was challenging Moses. And as a matter of fact, Korah did not like Moses. And he told him. He didn't like him. He didn't like how he acted. He said, who do you think you are? He said, you know, he was challenging his leadership. Sounds like what we do with the president. Now, I don't care whether you like him or not. He doesn't care whether I like him or not. The Bible says we need to pray for those who are in authority. Now, there has just been, I have never in my life seen such dishonor and disrespect to a person in office. I have never seen this before. Never. Never. I mean, you have Mrs. Pelosi tearing up the papers as he's speaking. What are you teaching our world? Rebellion and disrespect. That is a Jezebel spirit in operation. Now, the Lord is saying to us, this is not acceptable. Now, whether you like President Trump or not, it's not my issue. But the deal is the Lord, has, he is the man of the hour. Just like President Obama was, we prayed for him. President Bush was, we prayed for him. He's the man of the hour. And they have done everything to come against him. When you read through this book of number 16, it's scary. And see, but the bottom line, Moses said, hey, you're not coming against me. You're coming against God. When have you ever seen a president that's been trying to bring back righteousness back into this country? We have not seen that before. Not in a long time. Not like this. He brought the, you know, um, uh, he's bringing prayer back into church. He's, you know, he's, he's uh, you know, aligned with Israel. Um, you know, he's trying to shift things trying to get abortion out of our cities, out of our states. And there's been such a fight. So you know that this is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual war that we're fighting. But the church at large cannot submit to the rebellion and to the disrespect because Korah, the ground opened up. And Korah, his family, the associates, they were, they were I mean, boom, they were gone. Amen. This is no joke. And every one of us, listen, I've had my share of being rebellious. I've had my share of comments about different ones that I don't like either. And he said to me, you, none of us are excluded from this. And I have been repenting. I said, Lord, I don't want to have that heart. Moses and Aaron, when, when um, Korah was coming against them and the other two guys, when they were coming against them, they fell on their faces and cried out. They didn't say, you know, Oh, you need to shut your mouth. Who are you talking to? No, they cried out to God. and said, God, have mercy. Yes. Yes. We have got to stop what we're doing. I'm speaking to the church, and I'm speaking to the church Christians that have been acting like the world. That is sin. That is wrong. Now, God, this word is, and I'm not yelling at you. I'm not. It might seem like I'm yelling. I'm, I'm not. It's just that it just, the Lord just said to me, this is so important that this word is released. We have got to vote righteousness. We, for righteousness. We cannot allow abortion, innocent blood to, to, to overtake our land any longer. That brings a curse on us. You understand how it affects us? And these, these innocent babies dying? And the sexual immorality, the idolatry, the, the corruption that's been taking place, God's saying enough is enough. And so I want to encourage you to watch. Robert Heidler taught an, an amazing message on um, April 5th. Go, you have to go to Gloria Zion's website. And he, he really broke down the plagues, and he really was explaining it, but he really brought out scriptures from Habakkuk. Uh, I am telling you that he was covering sex trafficking in the book of Habakkuk that was there about the woes to, to what will happen. And because of God's amazing love for us, he's saying, I can't allow this to go on any longer. And so, yes, the virus here, is it getting our attention? Yeah, it is. And so I want to, we're going to pray. And, you know, the, the Lord said to me, he said, my church, he said, they will operate under a fear, with a fear of the Lord. The Lord also said to me that he's releasing a travailing anointing that's coming back to the church where there's going to be wailing. There's going to be travail for, for miracles, for breakthrough, for, for a turnaround, for a shift. We have that right, until, but we have to get our hearts right. So some of the scriptures on the fear of the Lord, and I'm going to close before we pray. Um, you know, 
The Bible says in Psalm 34, I'm, I've been doing a study on this on the, I, for a while, and I, I'm writing a, a book on it, on the fear of the Lord. But the, the scriptures are amazing. Psalm 34, 11 through 13 says, Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord with all inspired reverence and worship him with obedience. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days and he may see good? That's what happens. The fear of the Lord, it's a holiness. It's a reverential fear. It's not religion. Religion hates the fear of the Lord. Religion is all do's and don'ts. The fear of the Lord is an intimate walk with him. It's surrender and submission. When you go through the scriptures, and I'm not going through all of them, when you go through the scriptures, the fear of the Lord, in Isaiah it says, the fear of the Lord brings treasures. And when you look up that word treasures, it means storehouse. That means money. It says the fear of the Lord brings you health. The fear of the Lord cleanses you. How can a young man cleanse his ways? right? It cleanses you. A lot of people that are battling with sexual addiction and pornography, you need to get and surrender yourself old fashioned, crying out to God and surrender your heart to the Lord and ask him to cleanse your ways, meditate on the word. I have seen that. That's how I was raised. I was raised where we were taught to get on our faces before God. We have seen more miracles. We can't, I mean, I, I thank God for the internet because you're watching, but you know what? We have to hear the word of the Lord for our own selves. That's the privilege that we have. You can't keep listening to this one and that one. I mean, you can listen to them, but listen to God first. That's what causes the breakthrough. So, you know, the, it says here, you know, so we have the fear of the Lord, but then you have the demonic fear, right? So we know that all this turmoil and everything, we know that God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of sound mind. So there's a twistedness with this, but the Holy Spirit saying, I am loosing my fear of the Lord back to the church. The fear of the Lord is a surrender, like I said, in a submission, but it brings the power of and the holiness and the glory of the Lord. We have the glory of the Lord. I love what it says in Isaiah uh, 61. Um, I, I, you know, in the Amplified, it says, rise from, um, I'm going to, let me just get it for you. <laughs> it says, I like it in the Amplified. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. See, this is what happens. How do we do that? We surrender. We submit. We repent to the Lord. We say, God, forgive us for our sins. You know, in the book of Daniel, before, you know, uh, the angel appeared, Daniel was doing identificational repentance. He was repenting on behalf of the rebellion in the land, the sins of their forefathers. And we're going to do that tonight. We're going to repent on behalf of, of, of the sin that's been in the government in D.C., in our, our, our heads of our, our states, the corruption that's been there, the, the, um, the, just the compromise, the lack of honor or, or and the fear of the Lord, where there's no fear of the Lord. That's what God is saying to us, my people. I love you so much. I love you with an everlasting love. I can't let you stay this way. As a parent, you see your kid going off the wrong way. You're going to let him go that way? No. No, because you love them too much. You know what the future can hold if you allow them to go down a path that's not of you. That's not good, right? So the Lord is saying to us, don't be wise in your own eyes. In Proverbs 3, 7, in the Amplified, Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. I'm going to tell you something. This spirit of offense in the church, that's huge. Offense, you get offended over everything. Well, you know what? If you're getting offended over everything, that means you have a heart issue. And you have a hard heart is what the Bible says. Because when you have a heart issue like that, it causes you to walk in unbelief. Read the Psalms. Read Psalm, I think it's 78, where it says that the thing that aggravated God the most was the people's murmur and complaining in their unbelieving heart. Every step of the way, Moses, and even Korah, when you read through, even after Korah was swallowed up, the people were arguing with Moses. There was a plague that took place, and you read through it. Read through number 16. But they, they put the censer out, which represents they were worshiping. There was intercession going on. 14,000 people died. People, this is serious. We can't move on. Passover, you know, we're going to celebrate uh, Passover in the next week, you know, starting in sundown tomorrow. 
this is a time of deliverance. And I said, Lord, I want my heart clean. I want deliverance in my life. I want deliverance in my family's life. I want deliverance in my city and my nation. I want deliverance, God. I want to see lives turned around. Do you? God has given us a plan. And he's saying, I will make a way of escape for every temptation, everything you're going through. He said, I know how to get you out. I know how to turn things around. He's saying, but I want you to surrender to me. Then we're able to sit, shout grace, grace to that mountain. That we're, we speak to that mountain, that obstacle that's in our path. That you're saying, I don't know how to get out of the mess I'm in. I don't know how to turn around. I'm telling you tonight, it's through repentance. We have got to get on our faces before the Lord. We have got to get back to, Lord, I am crying out to you. I am worshiping, not a pity party, but a worshipful, God, I surrender to you, and I truly repent. When you repent, it means you don't go back to that place any longer. Not, oh, I repent. Oh, well, God, have mercy on me. And listen, God's not mocked. It's either we're hot or we're cold. It's, you know what, yeah, I was straddling the fence, but Lord, tonight, I'm, I'm making a conscious decision to serve you. I am making a conscious decision to yield and surrender my heart to you. You may be listening to me tonight. You might be aggravated with me, but I'm sorry for that. But I'm just saying what the Lord has taught me, and he told me to speak tonight. And he told me to speak about repentance and getting our heart right. And in order for me to have shared this message with you tonight, I had to do it. I was on my face, weeping before the Lord about areas that he showed me in my heart. And I said, Lord, I don't want anything to come between me and you. Lord, I, 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 I love you, Lord. And I said, and, and I love your people. And, and the enemy loves for us to devour one another and to come against each other. That's not the heart of God. So before I pray, if you, first of all, if you haven't ever accepted the Lord, I want to give you an opportunity. And I also want to give the person an opportunity to rededicate your life. You may, you may have had a hard heart. You may be mad at God. You may have been disappointed. You know, you go, you go through, you know, we've gone through some tough times. And, and let me, it's very easy to get a hard heart. I've had them. Trust me. <laughs> I can speak about it. Lord, forgive me. You can just pray along with me. Lord, forgive me for where I have walked away from you. Lord, forgive me for where I have judged you as my problem. Lord, I repent for listening to the lies of Satan. And tonight, I choose to surrender my life to you. Yield my heart to you, Lord. Come back to you. And I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your amazing love for me. You don't want that any should perish without you. So I surrender to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So as I'm praying this, I just see people running into the arms of the Father. He is such a good dad. He's a good, good father. He's good. He's just good. And so, Lord, we just want to come before you tonight as we pray. And, you know, I'm going to pray. If any of you here tonight even feel to say anything else before I close, let me see what time it is. Um, all right. We've got like five minutes. All right. So, Lord, we just want to repent here tonight on behalf of our ancestors and our behavior, even where we have aligned, Lord, with rebellion. Lord, where we have been so hateful and rebellious, God, we ask you to forgive us. And Lord, we repent on behalf of, of those in our nation and our government that have been so hateful, those in the church that have been so hateful and rebellious and disobedient. God, forgive us where any part of us have aligned with that because we all have done it one way or another. We all have done it. So God, it's not, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Lord, I'm just asking you to uncover our hearts. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal blind spots. Lord, we just, we just bow before you. We humble ourselves before you. We repent of pride. That's part of the thing about removing the leaven. Leaven puffs up. Lord, forgive us where we have a self-righteous, prideful attitude. Where we have judged others. We've judged their walk. We've talked against them. 
We've walked in offense. God, would you forgive us? We don't have that right. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for uh, passivity and being slothful and complacent, for just wanting to, you know, just make it halfway through and not really seek your face. God, forgive us. What a privilege it is to seek your face. We reject the lie that it's too hard. Lord, forgive us for murmuring and complaining. Please forgive us, Lord, where we have just murmured and complained and grumbled. God, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for fearing and not trusting you. You know, if you're, if you're struggling with fear, the Lord's there to help you. Picture him holding your hand. Just say, I renounce a spirit of fear. I come out of agreement with a spirit of fear. I break your back. And I loose the power of the blood of Jesus over my life. No weapon of fear formed against me will prosper in Jesus' name. I will not align. I will not listen to the lies of fear. I will intercept the arrows of fear that the enemy is sending to me. And I'll grab them. I'll intercept them. You release the word of the Lord back to him. You speak the word. And, and God does what he does so well. I don't know how he does it. He just strengthens you. So now, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your mercy. You know, if someone's listening and you had an abortion, the Lord is a forgiving God. Just ask him to forgive you. And the Lord wants to bring healing to that trauma that you endured. He's not a mean God. That's the thing. He's a loving, merciful God. So the enemy, we think it's a, a way out of a, of a problem. No, it causes problems. See, the enemy's a liar. So Lord, please forgive us where we have listened and we have aligned ourselves where his voice is greater. His voice has been louder than yours. We, 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 we decree today that that shifts, that your voice, God, will be louder. Your voice will be the one I submit to. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you're good and that your mercies are new every morning. Lord, I choose to boast in you. I choose to magnify you, oh God. And I thank you for your amazing love. You're not mad at us, but you're saying enough is enough. I can't let us. He can't, as a loving God, allow us to continue going on the way we're going on. It can't happen any longer. So, Lord, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy. Your word says in James that mercy triumphs over judgment. And, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that we are crying out. We are asking you to forgive us. We are sorry. We're sorry for our ancestors. We're sorry for where we have aligned. God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. And, I, you know, I just heard the scripture where in Daniel... When he was praying, that this is like in the next chapter, the angel said to him, he said, listen, he said, I've heard you. I, I, I heard you. You know, I've been warring for 21 days to get here. And he said, I've come because of your words. See, the Lord hears our cries of repentance. He hears faith. He hears. See, God says you just need that faith as tiny as a mustard seed. So don't be all concerned. Oh, I don't have this great faith. He will meet you where you're at, but just say, yes, Lord, I choose to believe. Let the angelic, there's an angelic presence. Let the angels come and respond because of your words of faith, because of your repentance, because of your heart. Lord, we just love you. And Lord, I just thank you for each and every person that's tuned in. Lord, this is not a word to harm anybody, hurt anybody's heart. It's a word to bring us out. We are, I declare tonight, we are crossing over. Remember when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, he was in the boat. The storm was happening. He was in the boat with them. Jesus is in this storm with us. And I declare to you, we are crossing over to the other side. We are making that breakthrough. We are breaking out. And we're going to see God move in ways that we have never experienced before. I have a heart of expectation for that. And that's what he wants for you and me. 
So, Lord, I just thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we say you are a good God, and we worship you, and we extol your name tonight. And we say, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice in you. Oh, El Elyon. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Oh, Lord God Almighty, your El Shaddai. Lord, you are the one who watches over your word to perform it. You are that man of war, your word says. You are Jehovah Sinkanu, our righteousness. We are in right standing with you, not because we're trying to be perfect, but because of the power of the blood of Jesus. So, Lord, we're, we're grateful that we can come before you as the great I am, as Elohim, as Adonai, our master. Oh, Lord, we worship and extol your name. You are good. You, we, you are so good. You're kind. You're, you're merciful. You don't give us what we deserve because of your mercy. So, Lord, tonight... Let us meditate. We will meditate on your goodness and on your amazing character and your faithfulness to us. You're always faithful. You're eternal. You're faithful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.